Hello there everyone, so this is a video explaining how I use open broadcaster software to record my videos here for YouTube. I actually wanted to do this, want to help out a lot of people who have been asking how to do that, and I didn't find a lot of people saying how they do that with, with open broadcaster, so yeah, why not me? So basically in order to, rec you first have to get the, the software, I'm using OBS Classic, OBS Studio was just released in August 8th, so you can get that one as well, but I'll be doing my analysis of OBS Classic. It's really cool. It allows you both to live stream and record at the same time, you know, for YouTube, uh, for instance, so that you can have the file. Um, and I'm going to go through basically how it works. You select a scene and you select a source. By selecting a source, you can actually, for instance, the, the basic one is to add a game capture. Game Capture will allow you, let me just show you, let's put random title here, and it will allow you to select the application. So just run the game, go back to this, you know, select properties and uh, use the application. So I'm going to do cancel here and I'm going to show you one that I already have. So I'm going to select Total Warhammer, properties, and you can see that as soon as I have the game, I just open the game and I use uh, the controls to start recording. It will immediately select this one as the application. Okay? I will just have to click here to, to add that one. So for instance, if I click now, everything will go black because it will try to find. Actually, it's saying it cannot find the window. So I'm going to cancel that off. Good. What does it make? It makes that uh, the game, the the open broadcaster immediately tries to capture the window that you have selected here. Right now, which one have I selected? Oh, this is called Captura de Monitor. It's in Portuguese, but it's window capturing. Oh, monitor capturing. Sorry, I'm capturing the monitor which you are seeing currently right now. I also have the webcam and the CLR browser. I'm going to explain what these are in a moment. The webcam is very easy. You just add a video capture device and then it will do something like this. It will just, I'm going to go for properties and it will just allow you the properties for your current device. So I have this one right here. I can configure several other situations uh, but just notice this is what I'm using. The resolution, it can be lower and it should be. So you'll have the camera resolution a little bit lower, but it's actually uh, better overall. So to, if you start noticing that your hand, for instance, is if you're if it's not having the correct F FPS, sorry about that, you may wonder on that regard. You know, you may wonder on that. Um, you may want to drop the resolution here so that you can actually have better FPS. Uh, by the way, you do need light a lot for the web camera, so it has to do with the web camera as well, so make sure that you have a good uh, good one for that. Basically, I just have a standard uh, HD camera and that's it. It's a very cheap one, just to allow me to have the camera and light right there. Um, so let's go on to settings. Settings, uh, you do have the general English, nothing too, too much. Enable cursor over projector, yes, please. Encoding, this is where you need to spend a little bit of time. So basically it's just letting the encoder, I recommend using X264. Uh, use CBR, use customer buffer size and have the buffer size the same time, uh, the same one as the max bitrate. Unless you know what you're doing, which I don't. Basically, why do I have only 2500? Uh, this has to do with Twitch. I'm also live streaming. So unfortunately I cannot have a different bitrate for streaming and a different bitrate for YouTube. Why would you want that? Bitrate has to do with the quality of the video. If you have a lower bitrate, like let's say under 3500, if you have a low bitrate, the video quality will be less. That's why on Twitch you also see people that go on very high um, ultra settings on the game and it still doesn't look like it's really good. You know, it doesn't look like really good looking when comparing to your YouTube recording, because a YouTube recording can have this bitrate really high. It's only Twitch and the situation with the latency and such that you have to reduce the bitrate. Twitch doesn't allow you to, be, to have more than 3500 bitrate. What does it mean is that the quality can never be as high as, let's say, a YouTube video. That's why streamings have different uh, qualities than YouTube videos. So, too, lo too long didn't hear. Bitrate has to be low if you're streaming. If you're not streaming, crank it up as 
as high as you want. So 10K, for instance, is a very good quality, but it also increases this, the video file. So bear that in mind. It's always, if you're increasing here, the video file will be bigger. Right? Um, for streaming, I definitely recommend 2500. If you're having, if people say that your, that your stream is always buffering, certainly lower this to at least 2000, 2500. Not, I do not recommend less than that. Otherwise, campaign map action will get blurry and some, some high action uh, games like MOBAs will get really blurry. Let's go into broadcast settings. So I also have the live stream service. Twitch, I'm, I'm closer to Paris, so that's the one that I choose. And I have my stream key here. If you don't know how to find that, please Google on how to find that up. Or ask me here in the comments below. I'll help you out. Uh, these, all of these other settings, for instance, the file path and the replay file, buffer file path, is exactly where you want the replay to be, to be set up. And I don't want to save the stream to file because I record the streams, the, the video separately. I'm going to show you how. So in terms of video, just have your video adapter, base resolution, and you can also have the option to downscale. This can be useful if you want further FPS, and if you don't mind having a 720 video, for instance, or a less scaled video. It actually helps out a lot, uh, depending on your system. In terms of audio, just desktop audio device, the default one, and the microphone, just make sure that you have the one on your uh, headset, or if you have a, a different microphone, just make sure that you have that on, right? Uh, you can always test that out here. You can always see that my microphone is making the noise, but there's nothing on the, on, on the, the sound there. I always have it cranked up on maximum. No big deal there. Um, so start streaming, stop streaming, start recording, and stop recording. This means that whenever I start the stream, it won't be recording automatically to my uh, to my computer. What I actually do is that when I want to record the specific episode for the YouTube, I just click Control 11 and it will start. Both processes are allowed at the same time. Right now it's saying rec, but it could say live plus rec, as in I'm live, but I'm, I'm streaming, but I'm also recording. It allows two things at the same time. So I usually start up my stream, and when I'm ready to record a specific video for YouTube, I just start recording it. And then that episode, I'll just stop recording it without having to stop the stream. That's the big thing that I love about Open Broadcaster. So let's go into advanced settings here. This is actually on default. Other than this, if I'm not mistaken, this is on key keyframe interval 2. This is required if you're streaming. If you're not streaming, you don't need to do that one. Just notice, if you change this from very fast, let's say, to ultra or super fast, this will help out on the load that is happening on your computer. But the video will get severe reduction in graphical quality. I recommend that you test this, these out because some people go and just make sure that uh, the buffer is really high, you know, that they have a lot of um, the bit rates really high so that they can offset the reduction in quality like this. You know, that, that kind of makes sure like this is for the CPU, you know, this is the load for the CPU and this is the file size and the overall quality. That's kind of how I like to watch it, okay? But if you just use these settings, it's pretty cool. Don't change anything there. Uh, I don't use Quick uh, Sync Encoder. Browser is a new thing, but this is a good one. This is a microphone noise gate. This is really necessary. So I'm going to stop talking for a little bit. You see what was happening there? I was not talking. But you always know want to have the closed thre threshold and open threshold exactly on the short bursts of sound that you saw that. That way it will close that up. If I would increase it, then I would have to speak louder for it to, to go through. It's basically a noise gate. Okay guys, uh, if you want further explanation this, just uh, ask me. And that will be it. Let me cancel for not to change anything there. So, running into plugins, here's a couple of them that I recommend. So, the CLR Browser plugin, this I uh, use just to make sure that I can have some uh, pop-ups for my Twitch, such as the Twitch Alerts. 
this is what you use. You'll have all the information that you need here and um, on the Twitch alerts as well. Right, guys, it does have a specific situation. More on this, you can just message me and I'll ask, uh, I'll help you out setting it up. In terms of having a video as an intro in OpenNet Broadcaster, I actually have an intro video that you didn't see, and here's what it works. I just take away the plugin and let me show you the properties. This is the playlist editor. I just enter the file path and that's it. That's it. You just select a video and it will always be recorded before you uh, start your recording. To be true, this is what actually happens. Let's say that I start my recording. You will see the recorded video popping up. You would see the recording video popping up on your OBS broadcaster. So you just have to wait. You don't say anything, like you mute yourself. You mute yourself and after that, as soon as you see your image there, you can start chatting, you know, and everything will be really cool on the video. I can have a sample video there if you would like. Right, guys, that was a long, that was way too long, 11 minutes for uh, an explanation there. Sorry about, I wanted a very uh, simple explanation, but I rambled, rambled on a little bit. If you have any questions, message me. Uh, I'll be glad to assist you. If you, I will leave you both uh, all of these links on the description below on the video. And yeah, guys, any questions at all, just ask me. Uh, I'll be glad to answer them. And I hope you guys have some good experience with the OBS Classic. I certainly have. It made my life so much easier. Um, there's other gaming capture devices. The one thing that I believe that Open Broadcaster should do and it doesn't do right now is to have uh, like when you're recording that you could pause and then resume the recording. You cannot do that right now on OBS Classic. That's the only thing that I could matter that I could think of that I would change for OBS. All right, that's the very single thing that I would love them to do. Um, all right, guys, it's been rambling on for quite a lot. I hope it helps and good gaming and good gaming sessions and good recordings. Cheers, guys.